Well, I became aware of the fact that um, Elvis's shirt was for sale. The shirt that was for sale was a blue velvet shirt and the pictures used to illustrate it were from um, a concert that Elvis did in 1956, September the 26th, 1956, in Tupelo, Elvis's birthplace. And this was a special, very special event. 56 was Elvis's year and it was the Hero Goes Home. He performed on this fairground to a massive audience. And there are fantastic photos of Elvis with the sun, clear, clear blue Mississippi sky. That shirt for me was one of the images of the young Elvis, the pre-army Elvis when he was raw and really at his best. So I thought if I want to buy anything, this is the one Elvis thing I would want. So I went along to the auction rooms at Christie's and I got a bit overexcited. I bid more than I intended, but I did end up with my little bit of Elvis. So I was a happy, happy man. I had the shirt I wanted and the letter of provenance saying that this was a real thing, signed by Dave Hebler, who had been Elvis's bodyguard and who said that Elvis had given him this shirt and now he was selling it on. And people were saying to me, you are mad, because with VAT and that, it was £11,200. I hadn't paid anywhere near that much for a car. Anyway, I got the shirt back and I took it out, I tried it on, I just felt it a bit. I was just excited that it was in the same house as me. And then I got out as many books as I could find with pictures from the Tupelo gig to look at the, the shirt when it was in its moment of glory. And one of the pictures, and there isn't a clear one of this, there's one of them where it looked very much like there were no buttons on the lower part of the front of the shirt. Well, this shirt, as you can see, has buttons all the way down. It put real doubt in my mind. I stopped going to the wardrobe and stopped being excited because it was in the house and stop, I started feeling this, this feeling of that I'd been, not just that I'd been tricked, but that I'd got this thing which I thought was special and which maybe wasn't. So I've come to America and I'm gonna find out one way or the other. I'm gonna walk the Elvis trail. I'm gonna talk to Dave Hebler if I can, that bodyguard who signed the letter of authenticity. I'm gonna talk to any of Elvis's friends, any of Elvis's work colleagues, Anyone who might have seen that shirt, I don't care how far I have to go, Las Vegas, Hawaii, anywhere, but I will find out. I'm on my way down to Marty Lacker's place. Marty uh, was a real good friend of Elvis, in fact, was Elvis's best man. So I don't get much closer. So this, I would say, is the closest person to Elvis that I've ever met, which is a bit weird. It looks like it. Yeah? Sure does. And it definitely is the kind of shirt he'd wear. Because he probably only wore it once. That's why it's in such good condition. That would be enough for me. Yeah. Believe me. Oh, well, that's a good Two or three sign. times he'd wear it, and then it would, you know, it would, he'd never wear it again. No. When you buy something like this, you often get a sort of letter of provenance with it, where someone signs a letter to say this is genuine. And the letter that came with it from a guy named Dave Hebler. You know Dave Hebler, I take mm -hmm. it. It was Elvis's bodyguard. Yeah, I talked to him last week. Isn't yeah. It? And uh, Elvis gave him the shirt as a gift, and then Dave Hebler kept it, and then he eventually sold it on. He sold it to you? Well, he sold it to someone to, else. To then someone sold, else, yeah, and then okay. Yeah. It finally ended up with me, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, does that sound? Feasible? I didn't know Dave had that shirt. That's the reason, you know, I was quiet about it. If Dave signed the letter, then, it, then it's true. Oh, well, that's a good sign.
Bernard Lansky was Elvis's tailor in the 1950s. The king would go along to Lansky's clothes shop on Beale Street in Memphis and buy all those flashy things that he used to wear then. If anyone can spot an Elvis shirt from 56, Bernard's the man. This one I made from years ago. It's a dynamite shirt. He wore this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you think it, this is a Lansky shirt? Oh, definitely. It's one that we made for him. It's a special. Wow. Could you put a date on this shirt then? Look, uh, it's, in the, it's in the 50s, 50s and 60s. <clears throat> yes, come on right on. Hey, there you go. What do you think? Man, that's, that's you. How, how can you be so sure, though, Bernard, that this is your shirt? Because there's no Lansky's label in this, is there? We were fast, getting them in and getting them out. Yeah? We had to get them on. He always had the clothes getting in. We always try to get it in and get out right quick so he can be on stage. But you, you are certain this is... You exactly. made this shirt? Exactly. So, a lot of things we bought special, a lot of things we made special for. <laughs> Sorry, this is very good news, believe me. Yeah, hey, I believe it. Why not? You deserve it. It starts to feel good again now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I lost faith in this shirt, but it's starting to feel no, good No, no, it's all right. Well, this is good news, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, why not? I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it. The man with the plan. OK. We know it was Elvis's next stop Tupelo, I guess. So it's looking good, but I still need to know if Elvis wore my shirt at that Tupelo concert. When I saw the picture in the catalogue of Elvis on stage in Tupelo in this shirt, I thought I was buying that moment, that moment of Elvis's life, when he came back as, as the local hero who returns triumphant. You could imagine what it would have been like, this figure in the distance with the sunlight catching the folds of that shirt and all these screaming girls, older members of Tupelo thinking, what the hell is this? What, what is this weird thing that suddenly happened? I know in my own small way that when I play a stand-up gig in Birmingham, that's special to me because that's still home. And the way the people react to me there is special. And even though I can do, you know, cracking shows all over Britain, happily, it's never quite like it is in Birmingham because they are, you know, it's, it's hard to say without sounding a bit pathetic, but they are my people and I can feel that difference. And I know, I'm sure Elvis must have felt that that day. It must have been really special for him to have been at Tupelo, the place where he was just, you know, a dirt poor kid, and there he was, a, a real genuine star, a hero, feeling the love coming up from, from his own people there must have been fantastic. The whole nature of this journey, for me, is an emotional journey. And as I talk now, I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck going. This is a big day for me. I'm going to the Tupelo Fairground, the Tupelo Fairground. I'm gonna meet people who were there the day of that concert. I'm gonna stand where Elvis stood. I hope I was gonna say it now. <laughs> <How'd you feel? laughs> I could talk all day about the fiddle. Hello? Yeah, definitely. Bobby and, right. Bobby and Bill? Yeah. Am I right? Hey, good. good. Hello. Uh, yeah. How are you? I'm Frank. Frank. Um, yeah, and uh, you two were, uh, Cops on the day of the, the 56 Elvis show, is that right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, this being a small town, we weren't expecting the crowd to react like they did. And when they brought him in, they met the car, and they had to turn around and bring him back out. Mm -hmm. So and Elvis would have been standing around where? About, Bill? about where you are now. This is but, where Elvis would have been? That's right. Up on the stage. And his dressing tent was just around behind the stage. At Impressive. that time, he's just another man to us. We didn't see any use in all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so Elvis would be in his 
dress in tent there and then walk out onto stage here. Right. And I, I guess the place went crazy. Like, it went wild. There were chairs set out for us to sit in, which nobody used, except to get up and dance in. Yeah. You know, and stand in. I remember the thing, it, you know, a really bright, sunshiny day, and the blue velvet shirt shimmering. Uh -huh. Yeah. Billowing. People were standing and pushing and shoving. And it was it was just a frenzy. We were just packed in here. Down on the down front. On the grounds. Yeah. Mostly teenagers. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Screaming and hollering. <laughs> I put my hands on the stage and he stepped on my on my hand. Yeah? Accidentally, I think. Uh, well. Yeah, I had it up there for him to do something with. Yeah. <laughs> if it was a step on Whatever. it, that was fine. A whole bunch just jumped up and down, having a big time. Yeah. <laughs> and trying to get to Elvis. Yeah. Weren't you a bit, a bit young to that's get what friends? I'm, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, where, where did we see that? Where did we know to do that? Uh -huh. I mean, that's uh -huh. not something that we uh -uh. had witnessed somewhere else and, and brought. This was something new. They were yeah. just trying to get yeah, to him. Yeah, they were trying to get to him. That's what it amounted to. They were uh, spasmatic. I think no, what he happened, just, he just, it brought, just it brought it out. He was just that kind of entertainer. So it was spontaneous. It you was had, you hadn't planned to. No, no, no. We were just coming to a concert. Yeah. You know, with Elvis whoever he is, except he was from Tupelo. <laughs> Your job was to look after some woman who'd <laughs> Look after the one little 16-year-old girl. You know, spasmatic actions. <laughs> they were just having a big time. Yeah. And and they wanted to get to Elvis before somebody else did. So was, it, was, was it a bit scary being on yeah, at the stage? Yeah, well, they would have tore his clothes off, I guess. <gasps> right, I want you to close your eyes. Oh, OK. okay. Just buttoning my cuffs. I'm uh -oh. taking my shades off. I want you to get the full effect. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this, God willing, is Elvis Presley's shirt. Are we opening Open our your eyes? eyes. It is! <laughs> it is! It is yeah. the oh shirt. Oh, my you think so? word. It is the, the shirt. sleeves, it has to it be. It has to be, because he was Look just all over. That is amazing. That is amazing. How would you like to do it the fondling beautiful. that you never got the chance to do that day? <laughs> 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 oh, it's good. <laughs> Oh, good. You know, oh, I'm so well. glad I'm in this business. Oh, no. <laughs> you wouldn't like me to no, stand on your hand just we're for old time's sake. <laughs> you can do that. You can do that. Here we go, here we go. But you were dancing and it hurt. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> well, I'm glad no. you, I'm glad it, you think it's the shirt. That's well, a very good vote of confidence for that me. Is, that is the shirt. Because you got no close to the most people. Well, I'll let you know what I discover. Oh, if I find good. out that this wasn't the shirt and I still need a souvenir from that day, maybe I could have one of you ladies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure, that's going to be less feel, than $18,000. <laughs> 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 we don't know. There you go. <laughs> I'll tell you something, I've, uh, you know, I've played in front of a few audiences and I know that feeling of you tend to look at the people at the front there. And I can imagine, I can see Janice and Kay and those 50s girls in all those, all that gear, those striving gear. Crazy, must have felt so good. It's all happening there. You're the big man back home and wow. When I first came here today, I felt really quite emotional, but now I just feel really good about it, because this was 56 and it was just really happening. Just, he really was just becoming the king, man. And here he stood. And every picture you see of Elvis that day has got that blue Mississippi sky in the background. And of course, the blue shirt. 
I reckon if you listen very, very carefully, you might just hear the roar of that crowd. A little bit of screaming. But there was one more twist in the tale. I had a visitor that night who'd been at the concert and who had some photographs that I'd never seen before. They would settle the debate one way or the other, good or bad. Hello, is it? How you doing? Danny. Danny? Danny Walls. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Frank. Glad to meet you, Frank. Um, I heard you might have some photographs. I think so. Uh, I think something you might like to see. Wow. This is from the uh, the show. Not August, uh, September 26, 1956. Tupelo Fair, the afternoon performance. Were you there? Yes, I was. His mother made him these shirts. One with, he wore the blue one in the afternoon, dark navy, and he wore the red one at night. And this is the red one? At night, right. He wore yeah. the blue one in the afternoon. So that was his mom and dad. So this is after the daytime show, is uh, it? Sometime during the daytime. I, it could have been, I think just before he went on stage, the afternoon. It, it was the afternoon show. So this is the blue shirt? Right. Mm -hmm. This was, I was being interviewed by a radio station disc jockey, Jack Crystal, at his microphone. Jack has a picture of him on it, but I didn't have that shot. This, he photographs. Well, it was, uh, he just got through filming Love Me Tender. Matter of fact, he sang that song that day. <laughs> I would say that, the, that my shirt is not the shirt that he wore at Tupelo in, uh, in 56. <clears throat> From those photographs, pretty conclusively, what he wore had got was a three-button shirt. that a shirt with the buttons in there and this is the blue one isn't it from the afternoon Danny mm -hmm. that um, they were, they were made that's not my like. shirt when I was standing at the fairground today soaking it up and thinking wow I reckon, beyond all reasonable doubt, as they say, that that was that shirt's first ever visit to Tupelo Fairground. If I haven't got the Tupelo shirt, what I want to know is what I have got. And uh, clearly I need to start asking some people to find out about that. Hello, is Dave Hebler there, please? Yeah, are you his father? Oh, OK, well, it's not, nice to speak to you, at least. So I'm going to speak to Dave Hebler, get an appointment with him. But before I go to California and try and track him down, I'm going to go to Nashville and speak to the very perfectly named Jimmy Velvet, who is the biggest pop memorabilia collector in the world. He'll know. Johnny Cash shirt, different stars, Dolly Parton, George Jones, Leonard Skinner, Liberace, Conway Twitty, Tanya Tucker, Kitty Wells, Richard Burton. Here's Elton John's award for 
Goodbye Yellow Birch Road. Sammy Davis Jr.'s golf clubs here. That's Evil Knievel's golf clubs. In this case over here is all Sammy Davis Jr. We have his golf clubs on the other side of the You name it, it's here. And this golf cart, that's really nice. That's Jackie Gleason's. It's pretty famous. Here. And up on top of the Elvis Arama is the bed post for the Liberace bed from his book. Oh, Las Vegas on it. These are, yeah, so Liberace's. That really goes together. It's beautiful. If those bedposts could talk, eh? I'm telling you. On the left here is Elvis's desk. That's uh, out of his Beverly Hills home. And the chair to it's on the other side of the room. This this desk is? Yeah. This is the king's desk. It's all walnut. Beautiful desk. This is Elvis's chair that goes with the desk. And it's been worn out in the bottom. It's got Conway Twitty's boot pack on it. Can I just sit in Elvis's sure. chair? Do you mind? Go right ahead. Feels good. There you go. Feels good. I feel like I'm being watched by the great man. Probably because of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, this used to look pretty Don't good. Don't tell me this is Elvis's head. It was I mean. Elvis's head originally. This is the original picture of Nixon and Elvis. This frame sat on Elvis's desk. This is a deed to his home in Tupelo. It was bought for $1,800. And it's signed by Vernon and Gladys. I have the deed to Graceland. I have the deed to the uh, Audubon House also. What I'd like to do is ask your advice, really, because you're probably the biggest Elvis memorabilia collector ever. 56 is a long time ago, and any of the clothes that I've found from the 50s or 60s have been really discolored a lot, uh, worn. Uh, they don't have fresh threads, you know. I would really... You think it's... A newish shirt. Well, if it wasn't for where it came from, that's what I would believe. Someone could have made this deliberately. Someone could have tried to copy it and said that. Yeah, it could have, could have very easily happened. You've it come across happen. that. I've run across a lot of it. Yeah. If it came from Dave, I would really believe it to be real. You know, I just can't picture Dave saying Elvis gave it to him. I just can't imagine him doing that. Well, that's um, good. He's one of the people that, though he can. He can be very strong and very brutal when he wants to be. Uh, he's also known for being very honest. But if it's a phony and Dave Hebler is an honest man, those two facts don't go together. No, they don't. They don't. That's why I chose to believe that it's real, but, but yet if it is, I can't imagine something being kept for uh, 42 years and looking that good. <sighs> but I don't want to say. No, it's OK. I'm already starting to have Big, big doubts. Oh, I hate that because you're such a nice person too. There are two things now. I'm certain it's not the Tupelo shirt. I want it to be a 50s stage shirt. And if it isn't that and it's a complete phony, then I want to know who made it, what happened, who's the guilty people here. Is it Dave Hebler? Is it Maybe Dave Hebler never saw it. Maybe someone else set the whole thing up. Maybe this shirt is like the monkey's paw. Maybe there's a curse on it. I'm going to die in America at the hands of Dave Hebler, clutching that bloody blue velvet shirt. Anyway, before I leave Nashville, there are two more Elvis people to meet. The first is Lamar Fike, part of Elvis's close entourage, known infamously as the Memphis Mafia. I think this is a shirt that he wore at, uh, at the Tupelo Fair. Well, that's what I thought. On stage, I think so. It looks that's like what a, I thought. He had a blue one and a black one. Yeah. Um, that's what he I also thought, wore, that's what I hoped. He, he also wore it in 57. He had a blue one and a black one he wore on stage. This was one of them. He had puff sleeves, and he put it on here. Yeah, this is it. It's a handmade shirt, number one, because it's lined. And the reason he had them lined is because he sweated so much. Yeah. And this way it wouldn't go through the shirt. You honestly think it's not a fake? It's not a fake. <laughs> it's not a fake. And if Bernard Lansky says one of his shirts, he's, that's not right either because it's a custom-made shirt. And if you want me to, I'll write you a letter to that effect. Really? Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. So you're sure? Right, let me tell you something. Who's going to tell me I'm wrong? Good question. From a walk-in authenticator. 
I really don't know who I'm supposed to believe now. I think that's almost part of the people's motivation is they think that if they say to me, yeah, that's the shirt, that'll be a nice thing to do. It's almost become like a politeness thing, you know. That's the shirt, now you can relax. I don't believe anything anymore. I mean, I'm a Roman Catholic, right? And, and I quit the church when I was 13. I walked out on the church. 17, I'll tell a lie. And then I stayed out of the church for about, oh, till I was 30. And the reason I stayed out is because I wanted more proof. And I didn't, I read loads and loads of books about Catholicism and stuff, trying to find some sort of proper evidence. And in the end, I thought, look, I've read all the books I can. Everything inside tells me I want to go back. So I went back. But that's not good enough with the shirt, you know. With the shirt, I want some bloody evidence. If it's not the shirt, OK, it's not the shirt, but I, I just wish someone would give it me straight. It's turning me into a cynic, and I don't like that. I wish someone would just tell me the truth. You think it's not a shirt you wore in 1956 on stage? I can't honestly say. I'm saying that it looks yeah. identical to the one that uh, he wore, which was blue and it was velvet, yeah. like this. The buttons, I can't answer the button deal. Yeah, well, what I was kind of hoping you'd tell me is sort of, uh, well, it's not a Tupelo shirt, but yeah, he used to wear lots of blue velvet shirts in 56, and maybe it's one of those. But... No, that's the only shirt I've seen wear them. Yeah. Uh, was the Tupelo safe there? And I don't know what happened to the shirts after that. No. Uh, well, that's incredibly bad news, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Because how I got this was, um, I don't know if you know, but in the 70s... I was like, worried about being in tune, not about how many buttons he had no. on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair enough. When it comes down to it, I guess that was more important. But hey, <laughs> at least you're the real Scotty Moore. Yep, you got that right. Hawaii, island of love. The ideal place for a condemned man to spend his last few hours on the planet. I say condemned man because I've got a definite appointment now with Dave Hebler, the bodyguard who signed that letter of authentication. And I figure that when I ask him about the shirt, he'll almost certainly kill me. But you know, when you're in Hawaii, it doesn't matter. Hawaii is also the home of the biggest Elvis Presley memorabilia collection in the Pacific. So I thought I'd drop by. Maybe here I can find out what it is that makes people like me want to own a little bit of Elvis. Hello. Welcome to Hawaii. Well, thank you very much. Elvis. Wow, um, my name's Frank. Hi, Frank. Nice Good to meet you. you. Is this uh, Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. What is this number plate? It's famous, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Was it Elvis's or? It was? Yeah. Oh, really? No, that wasn't his. Oh, it wasn't Those his. Are, these are ones they sold here in Hawaii. Oh, I see. Yeah. God, you have me completely fooled. Yeah. Nice to meet you. So, um, my name's Frank, by the way. Hi, Frank. I'm Pete. Hello, Pete. We have every book ever printed about Elvis, every movie, every documentary. But this is the gem. Autographed inside on a piece of cardboard. Oh, yeah. This is a treasure to me. Well, lovely people, but I'm standing here in this room and I'm thinking, is this a club I really want to be a member of? That is gorgeous. This is the 2,000 year old statue that looks like Elvis. Yeah, I mean, not just looks like, I mean. Spooky. Incredible. You look at the resemblance. I know, it's amazing, the mouth and everything. It's becoming a religion. It is the start almost a start as the way Christianity began. To show you how far people will go, here's somebody who bought Elvis's wart that he had removed from his finger. So what do you, what do you think a people... Jacket. What is it that makes people want to look at clothes and guitars that belong to the person they like? Isn't the music enough? No, there's never enough. 
it's it's the think? same attraction as if you could afford to go into an art museum and buy something by uh, Leonardo da Vinci or some other famous artist. But it's not really, is it? It's like because Elvis's art is the music. It's like buying, going into an art museum and trying to buy Leonardo da Vinci's jacket, which is a different thing from buying one of his paintings. Okay, you're saying why a personal possession? Yeah. I guess, you know, when he used to wipe the, uh, he used to throw the uh, scarves into the audience because it had a little sweat on its body. Uh, they felt, I guess, like they had a part of him. I'd like it to be Elvis's shirt, but I, I have changed my opinion about things. I wanted to own a part of that day in 1956 when Elvis played in front of his hometown crowd, and I don't. I say I don't. To be absolutely honest, I have got in my bag, this is slightly pathetic, a, a big piece of wood which I broke off one of the benches on that old grandstand at Tupelo. <laughs> because I wanted some sort of souvenir of that day. So I haven't completely lost the memorabilia of Bob. <laughs> Everyone had told me that Dave Hebler was a killing machine which he undoubtedly is. He has the capacity to wipe someone out, as they say, 14 different ways in 14 seconds. And that was a bit scary because I've never met the guy before and he's a bit of an enigma in the sort of Elvis fan world. And uh, meeting a stranger who's that powerful, that potentially lethal. It's basically like meeting a stranger who just happens to have a loaded gun in his lap. That's so easily he could have killed me if he'd wanted to. And also as we're in LA, um, he could have been some bloke who was about to flip and the button could have, you know, clicked at any time and he could have throttled me, I guess. These thoughts went through my mind about Dave Hebler, especially as the basic thrust of the conversation was, are you a liar, Mr Hebler? Which I wouldn't imagine is a thing that too many people say to him. Dave Hebler. Hello, Frank. It's good to meet you. My pleasure. How are um, you? Welcome to my wonderful car park. Oh, yeah, I see. I don't know if you're aware of this, but if ever you mention Dave Hebler to anyone who knows you, there's one thing they always say. And they say, be careful with Dave. He can kill a man in 14 different ways in 14 seconds. You could, I mean, it's something, it's something you have at your fingertips. If you needed to, God forbid, kill anyone, you could do it fairly quick. Oh, God. <laughs> Up in there? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. that little thing that bobs up and down there. <laughs> if you hit that hard enough, it actually swells swells up. Yeah. And it closes off the air. Yeah. So you suffocate. Right. The first thing about Dave Hebler is he doesn't look like a killing machine, which is a worry, really, because it made me think that the next bloke I have a slight altercation with in a motorway services or something because I think he's some old duffer who's got a bit of a mouth on him, could be able to kill me 14 different ways in 14 seconds. So I shall think about that twice in future. If I could show you a letter, which supposedly you wrote, and it might, I, I, you know, I'd like to know what you think about this. Uh, Ooh, he's gonna catch me with the goods. Um, I, well, I hope not. Oh no, let me see. This is uh, basically, is that your signature, first of all? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. So this, well, as you know, is about a blue velvet shirt. Blue velvet shirt. That Elvis uh, gave to you. Um, now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I actually bought that shirt. You? Yeah. Oh. In in auction in uh, in London at Christie's in London. Did you really? And uh, it may interest you to know that I paid uh, $18,000. It turns out that Elvis gave him a whole bunch of clothes. What year would this be? Oh, I don't know. But late 70s? Yeah, no, early, early 70s. Early yeah, 70s, yeah, early right. 70s. Okay. Mid, mid 70s, right okay. in there, yeah. The 1956 thing, uh, he seemed a bit unclear about when I questioned him about it. I think he did say that, yeah. yeah but he might not have. This, yeah, he might not have. Right. Uh, as but Dave, it, you wrote it in a letter that said uh, he did. I think he did, yeah. As I recall, I don't remember the exact words that he said concerning, you know, wearing the thing, but it was old. He'd, he'd had it for a lot of years, hanging up and cluttering up his closet. He didn't mention the concert he played in Tupelo in 56, did he? No. Not that I recall. No. But he did say that he wore it on stage? Yeah. He did? Um, I'd like, just like to check that this is the shirt that you had, obviously, it's, you know... That's pretty important to me, as you can imagine. I bet. Oh yeah, that's the gaudy sucker. <laughs> that's definitely the one. Oh yeah, unless it's a clever copy. And Elvis said that this was a stage shirt. Yeah. He didn't say where he was these days, did No. That I recall him, huh? Just, I spoke to, um, you know Scotty Moore, who played with Elvis in the 50s? He was Elvis's, I never met him, but Elvis's, I never met him. Yeah, I went to Scotty's house <clears throat> in Nashville. And he said that um, Elvis, in his memory, only ever wore a blue velvet shirt once on stage. And that was at the Tupelo concert. <laughs> but I know from photographs that that wasn't this shirt, because that shirt only had three buttons at the top, whereas this one, as you, as you, as you know, has got mm -hmm. buttons all the way down. So it's a real mystery to me that Scotty Moore, who was standing at his side for all those gigs, was very, very clear in his mind that Elvis never wore a velvet shirt other than that one. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I can't imagine when Elvis wore this on stage. I mean, you can't throw any light on that. Can't help it. To be honest, you don't seem that clear that he mentioned 1956 at all, mm -hmm. but you did, you but know, you did sign a letter, then. you know, that, that said that. Yeah. There wasn't, no one ever suggested to you, did they, that that, that would be a good thing to say? No, that's, uh, that's, that was, they asked me the same thing you asked, you know, the year, that was my recollection, that's what I put down. I asked him outright if someone else had asked him to, to do that, and he, he, he denied you. It's odd to me that he said to you that it was worn in 1956, where no one else who was around Elvis at that time remembers a velvet shirt in 1956 apart from the one at Tupelo, and it definitely it isn't that. Well, then you're going to have to deal with that, and I don't know what you do, you know? I mean, the man said that to me. It's what I put down there. It's what it was, whether that's... Whether that was absolutely accurate or not is... I wasn't there in 1956. I don't know. Are you, if, if that's not good enough, then I don't know what else to do. Well, I just... No, I'm not saying it's not good. You know, it's difficult because a lot of the evidence suggests that Elvis didn't wear this shirt on stage in 1956. Who do you want to believe? I don't know. Who should I believe? I don't know. That's up to you. I've said what I've said. That's what it was. Uh, you either accept that or you don't. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of it. Be happy with what you got because you got the good thing. If other people are casting aspersions upon that and making you doubt it, then you're going to have to deal with that. But you don't have to listen to that bullshit. This was Elvis's shirt, Dave, definitely. Yeah, you bet, buddy. And you take good care of it. He even wrote me a, a new um, letter of authenticity, uh, which is this, and he wrote this on the spot. And I'll read it. It's, uh, it's quite beautiful and almost poetic. 
It says to Frank, you f***ing paranoid fool you. Enjoy the shirt, it's real. Best wishes, your new friend, Dave Hebler. Um, which is quite moving, really. <laughs> And now it's off to the last place in my Elvis pilgrimage, Las Vegas, where the King played all those shows in the 70s. As it turns out, playing in Las Vegas at the moment are the Jordanaires, Elvis's vocal backing group. So I get to meet them as well. Ah, oh, still good. Statue of Liberty over there. Much better than the New York one, I think. You know, sort of nearer and better lit. But it's incredible. It's like a big kid's toy box. So before I go home, I get one more throw of the dice. I get to meet a group of people who sang with Elvis on hundreds of records and live performances, including Tupelo in 1956. Something about this whole journey for me is it's been slightly mythical. I keep drawing analogies on, on what's happened with the shirt and, and just life generally. We have to believe things every day that we don't know. You know, I believe when I go to the doctor, that certificate on the wall is a real certificate. So I think the whole journey has made me think about the nature of what's real and what isn't really. And I think sometimes, not to do it blindly, but to get the evidence and then think, hey, I'm going with this and I believe it and that's good, is the way to be. Otherwise life is too grim. You were great, you guys. Alex, Alex, Alex cheers. Cheers. good to be here. I'd like to see you that shirt. Cheers. Yeah. Why don't yeah. you put it on? Oh, put it on. Yeah, put the shirt on. Okay. I think he, it seems now that he did wear blue in Tupelo. <laughs> you see how well? I've got, I've got <laughs> pictures really of him in, in the shirt. Have you seen pictures of him in the shirt? Well, I've seen I went to see the Jordanaires, and then I chatted to them afterwards. And then something very <laughs> incredible indeed happened. <laughs> Um, I showed them the shirt, my old mate the shirt who's been with me every step on this journey and uh, for some reason they asked me to put it on, I don't know why that was, there didn't seem to be any logic, it didn't spring out of anything really in the conversation. I to take my clothes off by the Jordanaires. But when I stood there wearing it and the Jordanaires were there, I think that was the first time that, um, oh, I don't know. I think it was like it really, I, like I knew it was Elvis's shirt. Oh, yeah. So the memories come flooding back. Yeah. I, I he would have yeah. thought a lot. Yeah. And the one thing about it is his shirts never looked worn because he never wore them much. Maybe one time, maybe yeah. twice. So it would hold up pretty well over well, the years. Well, I would think, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, he wore that type and that color a lot. And they found... He never gave $18,000 for one. <laughs> no. Because no, when I stood there wearing that shirt and the Jordanaires was there, I just the right thing to do seemed to be to sing. <laughs> okay, here we go then. Brace yourselves. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must roll along. Cause I know there's a voice calling me. so bright and the land is alive and the night is as dark as the sea 
There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me, oh dear Lord, I pray. There'll be no sadness and no, no sorrow, oh, my Lord, in no trouble. Trouble I see There will be peace in the valley For me For me Hey, Elvis didn't sing it that high. <laughs> <laughs> but you did. <laughs> Set he down. He sang it in the lower key. Yeah. Set down, too. Man, tell let me tell you something. That was better than asking. If you'd asked, you wouldn't have got that. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I am the happiest man in Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, that was man. such a joy. All right. The experience I had tonight, you couldn't put in an auction, and you couldn't put in a glass case. Larry, but thanks bring, again for that. That was. We'll bring it up here. Wait a minute, Neil. That's more important to me than the show. Wow. Yes. He could have been in this room, you know. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace. In the valley for me, oh dear Lord, I pray. There'll be no sadness and no, no sorrow, oh, my Lord, Lord in no trouble, trouble I see. There will be peace in the valley for me, for Elvis didn't sing it that high. <laughs>